All right, good morning. A little different again. I'm glad that you're here with us and hope that this will be a, a blessing to you. We uh, today, but uh, tonight we'll have our, our Zoom meeting. Hope that you'll be able to be a part of that. If, uh, if we don't have your email, uh, give me a call or an email and let me know so that you can be a part of the service tonight. Why don't we start with a word of prayer and then we'll get into 1 John chapter 5 this morning. Father, we are thankful. Thank you for your word. And thank you for your faithfulness. Our Lord, that you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Uh, we thank you and ask your wisdom today. For this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at 1 John chapter 5, we're looking at the subject of what is a Christian? 1 John chapter 5 gives us, I, I think, one of Scripture's simplest explanations. I'm going to start reading in verse 10 and read just down through verse 13. 1 John 5, 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a witness, not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. We just stop reading there. I think verse 12 gives us what a Christian is. He that hath the Son hath life. A Christian is a person that has Christ. If a person doesn't have Christ, uh, they're not a Christian. He that hath not One of the things that made me start to think about this was uh, a definition that I received of Christianity that is the world's definition about what makes a person a Christian, or for that matter, what Christianity is. The world's basic plan is that there is a God who exists and uh, created and ordered the world. Now, not everybody believes that, but uh, a God exists who created and ordered the world. This God wants people to be good and nice and fair. And the, the goal that God has is ourselves. Now, this God doesn't need to be particularly involved in our lives, except when we need to resolve a problem. And Good people go to heaven when they die. You know, most of the people I talk to believe that. It, they've even come up with a, a name for it. Moralistic Therapeutic Deism. <laughs> Moralistic in that the, the idea is be good, whatever that means to you. Therapeutic want you to be happy. That's the goal. Now let me say, that's very contrary to uh, what God says is the goal. Therapeutic deism. Now, God will pretty much leave you alone unless you really need him. But when you talk to people and they give you their reasons why they think they're a Christian or what Christianity is, is that their reasoning is wrong. Uh, their reasoning is not what God says. The, the, probably the two most common answers I get when I ask people if they're a Christian is, I believe in God. And or, I've been good. If you ask people, if you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Yeah, I think it would. I've been good. Those are good enough. To say I believe in God, 19, the Bible basically says, the devil believes in God. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. Listen, Satan believes in God. doesn't make him a Christian. <laughs> He's not a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, believing in God is not enough. The other answer people give is, I've been good. Well, I mean, stop and think about this. How good is good enough? How good do we have to be? And the Bible over and over tells us are not enough. Titus chapter 3, verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. Now, Ephesians 2.8 For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
And then very clearly in Romans 3.10, he says, there is none righteous. No, not what? We need to understand that believing in God or trying to be good doesn't make a person a Christian. We need to understand God is sovereign. God is not just out somewhere not very interested in us. God is not just in our life when it's, it's convenient. God is extremely interested in our life, down to the very molecules of our being. He's extremely personal. He's involved in your life from before your birth to eternity. And He created you for a personal relationship with Him. And that's why we're here. And that's why we exist. And you know, God has a plan, and He, he wrote it down. And there's some things that have to be true for us to be Christians. Hebrews 11.6 gives us this general. Uh, Without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yes, a person must believe in God to be a Christian. <laughs> and we also need to believe that there, there is going to be a consequence to whether we believe or don't believe. And he's going to reward them that diligently seek him. And we need to believe that God has spoken in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13 where we started. It said... These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. When we understand that God has spoken, we can listen. We can hear from God. And we can believe and act on what God has said. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, Paul talked about the Gospel, Romans chapter 1 and, and verse 15. He said, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. So he knew that God's plan is something that can be said, it can be stated, it can be put into words. He said, I'm ready to preach the gospel, and if you'll believe the gospel... You can be saved. You can become a Christian. God's word can be spoken. In, in Hebrews, God tells us this, Hebrews chapter 1, uh, the very beginning of, of the book. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. God speaks. God is, and he's a Rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And we need to believe that He is, but we also need to believe that He speaks and that we can hear and that we can understand. God spoke by the written Word. He gave His message to the prophet. He also spoke it in person, specifically in Jesus. In John chapter 14, the disciples were upset. They were downhearted. And Jesus said this to them, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. I know not whither thou goest. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See, God's plan is specifically Jesus. He that hath the Son hath life. In uh, Acts chapter 16, there was a man who came under great conviction about his soul. He cried out to Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Their, their reply was, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And it says, And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Salvation is the same for everyone, is what that's saying. And it's by faith. It's by faith in, specifically, Jesus Christ. In verse 32 of Acts 16, it says, They spake unto him the word of the Lord. See, we have the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord tells us we all need a Savior. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Romans. 
you look at several verses there, uh, Romans chapter 3, for instance, and, and verse 20, the word of the Lord says, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. God has given the law, and the law condemns us. The law shows us our sin, shows us that we need a Savior. Now, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us falls short of, of God's glory. We need a Savior, and the Bible says Christ is that Savior. In fact, it's very specific that He's the only Savior. For neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a blessing that God has made specific provision for our sins. He sent the Savior. He is the Savior. Like we read in John 14, Jesus was able to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible says here in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 9, it's by His blood and by His life, in verse 10. Verse 9, much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. See, forgiveness is by the blood of Jesus. There was verse 10, for if when by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We're saved by his blood. We're saved by his life. The Bible teaches the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that's part of the gospel. Not just that Christ came and lived, but that he died. That he was buried. That he rose again the third day. Romans 10, verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Listen, you can't be a Christian without believing in Jesus. And you can't be a Christian without believing the gospel, that Jesus died and was buried and rose. Again, for with the heart and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. But the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not just to one country or one family or one person. It's to everyone, whosoever, all. Now, the resurrection of Jesus Christ shows the difference between him and any other religious leader. Christ conquered death and is able to offer us life and forgiveness. The question this morning is, are you saved? Are you saved? If you die today, do you know for sure, based upon God's Word, the Word of the Lord, that you'd go to heaven? Do you have Christ? Jesus said in John 3, you must be born again. The man he said that to didn't understand it at first. What does that mean? Adam. We have a physical birth. But then we have to be born again. We have to be born spiritually. And he, he makes it even plainer when he says that we're born of water. That's the physical. And placed in Christ. In Corinthians, the Bible says, In Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Being believing in God, it's not just being good. It's having Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. When a person becomes a Christian, there are some changes that take place. You can't have new life and stay the same. You can't have Jesus as your Savior and be the same old person that you were. In Romans chapter 6 and, and verse 4, at the end of the verse, he talks, in newness of life. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. But we have new life in Christ. 
Now, he says in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When you receive Christ, when you become a Christian, your life is, is changed. And, and one of the things that changes is you want to do what God tells you to. That doesn't mean you'll always succeed, but you, you want to. In, in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3, he says, Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I'm sorry, that's chapter 3, verse 3. Verse Chapter 2, verse 3. Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. There's several statements in this book and other places that says, here's a way to know that you know the Lord. If we keep his commandments. Listen, when you have Christ in your heart, it's going to make a difference to your life. You're not going to go on the same old way. You have new life in Christ. You're going to have different attitudes. You're going to have different actions, different loyalties, different goals. It'll change. If there's no change, you need to stop and, and consider, do I have Christ? Because Christ is, is the author of life. And when you're born again, uh, He changes your life. And the Bible says uh, another thing that, that changes is you have the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, He makes this, this statement, the, the last part of the verse, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. What He's saying there is if Yeah, there's been religious groups that have tried to make the Holy Spirit different, separate action and a second blessing and, and so on. Listen, when you get saved, you receive the Lord. And there's only one Lord. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it's all one God. And uh, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, takes up residence in your heart and life when you get saved. Look at, at verse 14 of chapter 8. And he tells us some of the things that the Holy Spirit does. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. There's at least three things there that the Holy Spirit does in your life as a Christian. One, He leads you. <coughs> led by the Spirit of God. There's going to be times when He'll say, No, don't do that. Other times we'll say, Here's, here's a job I've got for you. In uh, verse 2, we see that He comforts us. He's our, our Heavenly Father. Abba, Father. And we see in verse 16 that He bears witness. You know, I, I find there's, there's people who, when they sin, as Christians, they come under conviction and they, and they think, am I, am I saved? A am I really a Christian? Well, listen, conviction, when you sin, is a pretty good mark of a Christian. That's what he's saying here. God's Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit. He'll tell you when you're wrong. He'll work in your heart and draw you to himself. You know, a Christian has new life. A Christian has the Holy Spirit. In uh, John chapter 13, another mark of a Christian, the Bible says, is a love for the brethren. Many people know this verse. We often sing it. John 13, 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. And the Bible says that Christians are going to have a new concern. But it particularly gives you a love for God's, God's people. Because that's who you are. In fact, this is another one of those statements in, in 1 John when he says that this is a mark of a, of a Christian. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14. We know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. You know, when, I, when I meet people who say that they're Christians and, and they don't care whether they have any contact or any commitment to other Christians, I, I really want to you know, as Christians, God gives us a love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. In the, that same chapter, verse 23, this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And he that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him, and He in Him. And hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit.
Here's the three things we've looked at so far, right in those verses. You're going to have new life in Christ. You're going to have the Holy Spirit, he says there in, in verse 24. And you're going to have a love for the brethren. I find it interesting that the first two things he mentions there in verse 23 are that we believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. That's one of the first changes that, that takes place in a toward Christian. First John chapter 2 and verse 19, that another mark of a Christian is they, they continue. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they'd been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. They went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You know, the Bible says, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And we're not talking here about works to gain salvation. The Bible's talking here about marks. A, a real Christian, listen, there'll be times when you'll get discouraged. I was reading about Jeremiah this morning. Man, he got discouraged. But he said, I, I just couldn't quit. <laughs> the Word of God is in my heart. You just can't quit when the eternal God has taken up a relationship with you and He said that you have eternal life. Listen, that's the key. Eternal life comes from God. It doesn't come from our works. We're not saying these are things you have to do in order to be a Christian. We're saying when you trust Christ as your Savior, God changes you. His Holy Spirit takes up residence in you and begins to change you bit by bit, moment by moment, to be like Jesus. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life. Let me ask you this morning, are you saved? I'm not asking, are you, are you a member of a church? Do you go to church? I'm asking, are you saved? If you died today, you know for sure you'd go to heaven. He that hath the Son hath life. Do you have Jesus? You know, God makes us this promise in Hebrews chapter 13. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, Hebrews 13, 5, He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. What a blessing that our relationship to God is based on His character, not ours. Man, I don't know about you, that's easy for me to believe that I'm a sinner. And then we just believe that He's the Savior, that He's the Son of God, that He's the eternal God who took our sins upon Himself, who became sin for us. The Bible says He gives us new life. The Holy Spirit takes up residence. He changes our hearts and our attitudes. What a blessing! to be able to come to the Lord with all that we are and have Him make us all that we should be. In John chapter 10 and verse 27, Jesus talks about this eternal relationship. John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man has hand. I and my Father are one. What a blessing that we can come to God and know that we have life. He that hath the Son hath life. Let me ask you, this is just a simple uh, gospel message this morning. Uh, do you know the Lord? Are you saved? Your repentance and faith are two sides of, of the same thing. And you can't have true repentance without faith. And you can't have real faith without repentance. We need to confess our sins and trust the Lord to forgive us our sins. But let me encourage this, you this morning. Jesus is the only Savior. He's the only way to God. Christianity is, do you have the Lord? And the Bible says, whoever comes to Him, He'll, he'll not turn you away. He'll not cast you out. It's whosoever. It's all. He's willing to receive you. He's the only Savior, and He's a wonderful Savior. If you were here with me this morning, we would have sung a, a song. And I just want to read you some of the words. The cross upon which Jesus died is a shelter in which He is so free. He is its fountain, as wide as the sea, for you. And that's the message this morning. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for you.
Let me encourage you this morning, right, right where you are, right now, if you're not sure about your relationship to the Lord, listen, stop and make sure. God has done what's necessary. We, we call it the simple plan of salvation because He's done everything. And all you have to do is repent and believe. Turn to the Lord this morning. And give Him your heart by a simple prayer of faith. Ask the Lord to forgive your sins and to save you. Ask Him to make you His child. As many as believed on Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Now let's go to the Lord in, in prayer. And maybe you need to pray and ask, ask the Lord to save you right now. If you're saved, thank the Lord for salvation and for His Holy Spirit and His Word. Thank you, Father, so much. Thank you for this message this morning. Thank you for your Word. It's about eternity. Lord, if there are those this morning that are not saved, that are listening to this message, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would bring conviction, and that they would be willing to humble themselves and to pray and turn to you. Lord, I pray for our church. Help us as a church to be grateful, to be glad to be your people, and to love each other as you told us to. I thank you for uh, this method of, of being able to share the gospel with folks, and I pray, Lord, that it would reach into people's hearts, that you would speak to them and draw them to yourself. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for listening.